Zod is a lightweight and powerful validation library for JavaScript and TypeScript applications. It enables you to define the structure of your data through schemas and validate the input data against those schemas. Although it can be used with JavaScript applications, Zod works greatly with TypeScript. Zod can automatically generate TypeScript types from your schema, keeping the validation schema and TypeScript types in sync. TypeScript, React, HookForm and Zod are a great combo that allows you to build powerful forms. As a result, you will learn how to validate your React HookForm with Zod and TypeScript. By the way, this video uses the form build in the video titled How to create and validate React Forms with React HookForm. If you want to understand what's happening and how the form works, it's recommended to watch that video before proceeding further with this one. Before going further, you should have the following packages installed in your project. Also, you should have TypeScript installed and configured in your project. Import the required dependencies at the top of the file. Zod Resolver is a function for integrating an external validation library like Zod with the React hook form library. The function takes the schema you define as an argument. Z enables you to access Zod's functions and features. Now you can start building the schema by creating a Zod object. An object schema allows you to define the structure and type of the form data. You can define multiple data inputs, specify their types and add validation logic. The form schema object defines a schema object with four fields and their types. Username, which is a string, email, which is also a string, is admin, which is a boolean, and created at, which is a date. At the moment, the schema is simple. It only specifies the data types. Later, you will add validation logic such as checking that the username doesn't contain special characters, for instance. The official website mentions that Zod is a TypeScript first schema validation with static type inference. That means you can automatically infer the TypeScript types from a Zod schema. The form input type now matches the schema. The possibility of automatically inferring TypeScript types from the Zod schema is beneficial because it ensures type safety and consistency between the two. Until this point you have the form schema and the input types, but you are not using them. So let's pass them to the use form hook. In this code you set up a react hook form instance using the use form hook. You pass a configuration object to the use form hook as an argument. You set the resolver property to the result of calling the Zod resolver function with the form schema as an argument. You define the default values for the form fields. The use form hook returns a couple of properties such as register, which allows you to register input and select elements for value tracking and validation, or form state, which is an object that contains information about the entire form state. It also returns the handle submit function, which receives the form data if the form validation is successful. You use this method to handle the form submission. By the way, you can destructure the methods constant to retrieve only the relevant properties. Other properties are returned, but we are only interested in these three in this case. The last step involves writing the JSX code for the form. This is the complete code for the form. And this is how the form works up to this point. There are no validation rules, meaning the users can submit the form without entering any data. Moreover, they can also enter wrong data and still submit the form. You want to avoid that happening. Instead, you want to make sure the users only enter valid data. So, in the next step, you'll add some validation logic. We want the form to display errors when users enter invalid data. To do that, you need to modify the form schema. Let's start with the username input field. The username should be a string, have at least 4 characters, have a maximum of 10 characters and only contain letters, numbers and underscore. Zod provides a list of string validations functions you can use. We'll use the min, max and regex functions to validate the username input field. These functions also allow you to pass a message argument for a custom error message. 
If you try to enter an invalid username now, the form will not submit and it will display the appropriate error message. The email address should also be valid. Zod provides an email function that deals with email addresses. The isAdmin field can stay as it is, therefore we will not add any validation logic. The last field, created at, should have the following validation rules. The date cannot go past January 19, 20, the date should be in the past and the user should be 18 years or older. You can enforce those validation rules using the min, max and refine methods provided by Zod. In addition, the refine method lets you create your custom validation logic. In this case, the code checks if the age of the user submitting the form is 18 years or older. You might have also observed the coerce method. If you don't use the coerce method, the form throws the following error, expect the date received string. The coerce method lets you transform or modify the user input before it's validated against the schema. In this case, it converts the date string to a date object by passing the input to the new date. Congrats! You now have a working React hook form with data validation using Zod and TypeScript. In this video, you learned how to use React hook form with Zod and TypeScript, how to infer TypeScript types from the Zod validation schema, and how to validate your form data using Zod.